Incoming hype video in three, two, and one. Okay, so if you guys were too distracted by that sick special effects video, let me go ahead and catch you guys up to date and to exactly what's going on. I am excited to help announce the Flux Labs Mining Pool Program. Flux Labs is giving away $1,000 USD per month for 12 months, totaling $12,000. All you have to do is be mining to the Flux Labs Pool for 30 days straight and you're automatically put in the running to win. More details over at runonflux.io. I'll put a link down below. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, I am excited to show you guys, here's my flux node. It's nothing too crazy. This was actually hardware I had sitting around. It's an HP ProDesk and I went ahead and swapped out the solid state drive to make it a little bit more beefier and I gave it a little extra memory and bam, I got myself a flux node mining at home. So what I thought would be fun to do in today's video is I went ahead and sat down with Mr. Max Voltage. Many of you guys may know him, and he actually helped me set up the Flux node. I had no clue what I was doing, and I thought, well, let me take what I learned and share it with you guys. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the 10 things I learned setting up my first Flux node. Alrighty, miners, so before we get into this video too much, I actually wanted to provide you guys a link to this. So if you guys are looking to get your hands on one of these HP Pro Desks, I'll put a direct link down below. And then what I'll do is I'll also put a link to the solid state drive. Um, now I am doing a cumulus node on this currently right now. And so that does require a 240 gigabyte solid state drive, as well as eight gigabytes of memory. So those are things to keep in mind. I'll put a link down below as well to like all the requirements, but if you guys are a little confused, or you're not really sure what hardware to get, don't worry about it. I'll put a link down below and that'll get you hooked up real quick, real simple and real easy. And these aren't super expensive. And that was my goal. I wanted to get a flux node up and running for minimal cost. All right, so let's talk about item number one. So I'm gonna be completely transparent in this. It took myself and Max two and a half hours straight getting my flux node up and running. And that wasn't because we ran into hurdles or huge challenges or problems. It's a very long process. So if you are looking to set up your first flux node, I would recommend that you carve out a good chunk of time, especially if you don't have a, a kind of mentor holding your hand through the whole thing like I did with Max Voltage. I would double the time, to be honest with you, because there is no perfectly polished guide out there to do this process. It takes a lot of time, there is some research involved, and the learning curve is quite high. So number one, give yourself boatloads of time to get your first flux node up and running. All right, so the second thing I learned setting up my first flux node so when you're setting up your first flux node, there isn't this like magic website you go to or someplace in Zellcore you go to and be like, all right, I want to set up my first flux node or, you know, here's how you do it. Because if you guys aren't familiar, when you set up your first flux node, you're using flux as collateral. You need to have a certain amount of flux. There's all different levels of flux nodes. The one I did was a cumulus node. So that was 1000 flux. And you use that as collateral to uh, run your flux node. So you have to submit it in one form or another. And what blew me away, and I couldn't believe there was a, a simpler, basic, more well-explained process, is you actually go onto your Zellcore wallet and you send a thousand flux to your own flux wallet. Like, try to understand that. Like, not even just like a button that's like, I want to set up a flux node. Nope, you literally go to your flux wallet and you send 1000 flux to yourself on Zellcore 
and now you're ready to get started. It's so weird and wonky, but it was something that completely blew me away. Item number three. So 50% of that two and a half hours that I discussed of getting a flux node up and running was this setup process that absolutely could be streamlined. So to give you an idea, many of you guys are familiar with Hive OS and you're familiar with Belina Etcher to either put Hive OS as an image onto a USB drive or as a solid state drive. Well, after I went through this entire process, I actually reached out to some individuals I know on the Flux development team and I said, hold the phone. That took way too long. If I create an image for the community that has 50% of the work done, that has no customizations to me or anything like that, is that something I can utilize and provide that to the community? And they said, yes. So in a future video, guys, I'm gonna take the process of setting up a Flux node and cut it in half. It'll have Linux already downloaded. It'll have um, the, the Flux software, the Flux OS installed. And so when you put this on a solid state drive, like you would with Hive OS with Belina Etcher, you're already be halfway through the entire process and then you're ready to customize it for you. So keep that in mind that 50% of the entire process is just like downloading the proper version of Linux and, and, and waiting. There's a lot of waiting. Oh my gosh, so much waiting. That's item number four. We're going to jump right into it. So item number four on my list, you wait so much because like, and this is where I think cutting down on this process would be phenomenal. You like download um, Linux and that takes some time, um, you know, cause it can only give to you so fast. And then you want to update, update that. You want to up, make sure it has all the updates and everything like that. That takes a while as well. And then you want to download the Flux OS. That takes a while as well. There's, and then you have to like update your actual node at the very tail end of it. That takes a while as well. So there were plenty of times when Max and I were just shooting the shit, hanging out, talking for 10, 20 minutes, waiting for this stuff to finish. So you can definitely streamline this process. But as I said, there's a boatload of waiting. Okay, let's jump on to number five. So number five, setting up a flux node is not simple. It is not for people that are not very tech savvy. Um, it requires a lot. I was very fortunate to have somebody like Max, super tech savvy, who's done this process before. This is not just easy peasy. It is not a, give me the file, I'm gonna just put it on here, install it, and I'm done. It is nothing like that at all. If you have challenges setting up Hive OS, which literally looks like a cakewalk compared to setting up a Flux node, don't even try setting up a Flux node by yourself. And I know like the level, uh, the, the skill ceiling, let's put it that way, to set up a Flux node is very high. And I think some of that is actually intentional by their team in order to kind of keep these down. I really don't know. But number five, be careful. It is not for those that are not tech savvy. Jumping on to number six, nothing goes as expected. There were multiple times throughout the evening that Max and I were setting this up that we ran into some snags. Now they weren't snags that we couldn't overcome. Uh, there were little things like it said there were updates still available. We'd apply them. It still kept saying there were the same updates. It wasn't applying them. There were some things we had to clear out and stuff like that. Uh, another snag we ran into is like, I got trigger happy when we were going through the, uh, the flux setup and you have the ability to set up notifications actually um, through like discord or through uh, something like telegram. And I was like, oh, Telegram, click, like, let's set that up. And then you're kind of locked in like, oh, it's asking for this information, this information. And Max and I are like, I don't know what that is, like all these identification numbers and stuff like that. So we definitely had to spend some time researching these things uh, and it worked out. But there were a few snags along the way. So don't go into this thinking you're going to bang this out in no time and not run into any trouble. There were multiple times where we had to use Google as our best friend. Okay, so item number seven and on is gonna be items after your flux node is set up that I've really learned. So number seven is there's no up down notification statuses that are available for you. So I've already run into it where my flux node, I bumped it, got unplugged and it was unplugged for way too long and I, you just don't know about it. So you have to be babysitting your flux nodes. I, I kind of went into this thinking like, 
I set it and forget it with my flux node and that's absolutely not the case at all. You need to be checking on these daily, you know, really uh, making sure they're up. You don't want them to get too far behind. Um, so uh, something I'd love to see is something like a notification process built into Zellcore or, so, or, or I'd love to see here's something for our team over at Flux integrate with Hive OS so you can literally look at your Flux nodes in Hive OS. Like they're, even if it's just, you can view them and their up down statuses, oh, that would be awesome. And then you could utilize Hive OS's up down statuses, which would be really cool. Jumping on to number eight, keeping your Flux node up to date. So this isn't like Windows updates or anything, guys. Flux constantly has these updates. And unless you have, unless you're looking at their Discord all the time or logging into your actually Flux, your Flux node has an OS, like um, a web that you go to via web browser. It's actually really nice. Kudos to the team. But I literally log in there every day to check for a quote Flux update. Like they don't call it like your Flux node needs an update. They call it Flux. Like it's, it's a flux node it's not flux like all flux it's the flux node i just wish they would change that terminology but these constantly have these updates that you have to apply or else your flux node gets too far out of out of sync and then you end up getting kicked to the end of the line and all this stuff so you have to be keeping these up to date i think i've updated mine three times now in like two weeks so once again, you're babysitting your flux nodes, something I did not anticipate at all. Okay, jumping on here to item number nine, losing your place in line. So I've lost my place in line twice and I don't know all the nitty gritty behind this. So if I'm wrong, please comment down below. But Max has told me many times that I've fallen behind or I've lost my place in line because the flux node has been off or it has been not up to date updated fast enough and so if your flux node is like unplugged for too long of a period they penalize you and you go to the end of the line well the only time you get paid is my understanding is like when it's your turn in line so you got to make sure these are stable and up and running i think that's why a lot of people will like virtualize these at like data centers and go ahead and actually like pay for a server and stuff like that just for uptime so you don't kick out a cord or something uh, so that's something to keep in mind that you can lose your place in line very quickly. Last item, item number 10 is benchmarking. So there's a benchmark check that occurs directly after you set up your flux node. That is going to be enforced here very shortly. So you need to have a set amount of upload and download to run your flux node. And you can get away with running that right now but they're gonna be enforcing the requirements that they put on their website very shortly here. And that's gonna create a problem for a lot of people, but there is something coming out called uh, Titan. And it's a project built in with the Flux nodes that allows you to participate in having a Flux node without all these crazy requirements. So that's probably gonna to apply to a lot more people. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, miners, that's going to wrap things up for today. I am super hyped and excited, but I need to get my flux node plugged back in. I don't want to get too far behind and I do want to keep my place in line. Once again, if you're looking for one of these, you're not really sure, I'll put a link down below that should help you out, at least get you started with the right hardware. Well, hopefully you learned something today. Maybe you picked something up that I didn't know. I mean, there was a ton I learned working with Max and also just setting up my first Flux node. So hopefully it was beneficial to you. If you guys have more tips, leave them down below. Maybe other miners can benefit from that when they're setting up their first Flux node, which would be awesome. If you guys enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And finally, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.